Well, hey guys, welcome back to the weekend vlog. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Monday through Friday, I upload dedicated skincare related content. But on Saturday and Sunday, I just film a vlog of my day, just a little video diary. And of course I weave in skincare content. So that's what today's video is going through my Saturday. So if that sounds of interest to you, keep watching. But if you want more formal skincare content, check out some of the videos I posted earlier this week. We have one on uh, radio frequency devices. Can they cause facial fat loss? I have another video from this week about lash serums causing fat loss around the eyes and sunken and eyes and we also went to Target and TJ Maxx this week and checked out the skincare products including the new Curology skincare at Target so those are some of what went down this past week but here I am just doing my morning skincare routine I wash my face and then I put on this Q10 serum that I've been using for close to a year now from Timeless uh, Q10 is an antioxidant uh, but this product also has matrixyl a peptide that may or may not be doing something I don't know. I like it. Um, and then I'm coming in with this new tinted sunscreen from Neutrogena. I've really been loving these. The pure screen, they come in uh, a few different shades. And moving on to the most important aspect of my day, coffee. These containers you can get on Amazon. This was gifted to me from Four Sigmatic, but I love it for the coffee beans because it keeps them fresh with this vacuum push thing. <laughs> I'm not using my words, I apologize, but it's because I haven't had my coffee. <gasps> One thing I'll caution you though about these, they're great for coffee beans, but ground coffee, annoying because the, ground, the coffee grounds end up getting caught up around this part. And when you pull this out, it makes a mess. It probably wouldn't be good for other powdered things, but it'd be good for like rice or beans. Probably wouldn't be good for cereal. I don't know, maybe it would because cereal, as a side note, like it's sold in those boxes and you, it looks like you're getting so much, but then when you open it and you pull the bag out, it's like a third full. Um, you probably could store cereal in here, but I wouldn't push this all the way down because it would crush, probably crunch, crush the cereal, but that might be a good use of, of these two. They make them in a few different sizes too. Today's one of those days where I don't really know how to dress. I'm in my house clothes right now, as I call them, just like running shorts and a tank top and this, I call it my house coat, but it's just a hoodie. Um, but when I get ready to go out to run here, I'm gonna change my clothes into something more presentable, but I have no idea how to dress for the day. Hopefully it doesn't rain today. I have no information for you guys on this candle. I apologize. I pulled it out of my candle stash and I was like, where did this come from? Emma, Emma, Emma Shell. Um, but this is an apple cinnamon scented candle. It's really nice. Not like that craft store apple cinnamon that a lot of candles are. It's like a really natural apple scent. I've been enjoying it. I like the gold too. It's really pretty. Cause you know, most apple scented candles, they're kind of more fall, but this is almost like a spring apple, if you could imagine that. So I'm glad I discovered that it, in the back of my, my candle cupboard. I feel myself getting smarter after just one sip. I'm gonna sit down and get some work done. I'll check in with you guys in a moment. All right, I went ahead and got dressed in my green leisure suit for going out and running errands because A, it's comfortable. B, if it gets warm, this isn't too hot, but if it gets cool, this is sufficient coverage for what I need today. Um, I am coming in with my mascara though before I leave because I wanted to show you guys the Milani mascara that I purchased a while back. I actually purchased two. I, first I purchased the anti-gravity formula, loved it. I initially though was on pursuit and then later found the highly rated lash extensions. And I love this one too. This is a tubing mascara, meaning it basically puts tubes of mascara onto your lashes. So when you use like your cleansing oil, your eye makeup remover to take it off at the end of the day, these tubes just nicely come off. 
Originally, I discovered one of these when I tried out the Thrive Cosmetics mascara and loved that mascara. I mean, it is amazing. And this is like that, but less expensive and easier to find. Um, so I love, love, love this, but I also really like this. Um, I use both of them off and on. This one gives a bit of a bolder lash. This gives more of an elongated lash. Like I have no mascara on right now. Here's the wand, not much to look at. No mascara, mascara. Well guys, get excited because it's that time for a car wash. Uh, I'm listening to the last of Matthew Walker's Why We, Sl Why we Sleep, and he's saying you know, exactly what I have been saying for years is that uh, children, teenagers, um, they're being robbed of proper sleep during a time when their brains are critically developing because of these ludicrous school start times that have gotten earlier and earlier, forcing a teen to wake up at 5.30 is like forcing an adult to wake up at 3.30. And uh, it's just not their natural circadian rhythm. See, the adolescent brain, uh, their sleep pattern is different from an adult's. And so the earlier start time has really negative reproduc repercussions for their mood, their school performance, their development, their overall health. And a lot of teens, you'll notice, they sleep late on the weekend because they're trying to repay their sleep debt that has been imposed on them throughout the week. Um, and it's even worse for kids who uh, have to ride the bus because they have to get up even earlier to be on the bus and it's just uh you know a vicious cycle all right here we go get excited i always get a little nervous pulling in here because they have these large blue balls <laughs> that All right, here we go. My car is so dirty. Like, I don't even care if we get out of here and it starts raining. It's still better than than continuing on in the state of affairs that is the exterior of my vehicle. Ooh, I smell something good coming on in. Twenty bucks says there's methyl isothiazole in this. But. raises a very good point he says you should ask your doctor how much sleep they've had in the past 12 hours <laughs> and that should factor into your willingness to consider their recommendation because the likelihood of medical error goes up with sleep deprivation and a lot of physicians in training especially are inherently are sleep deprived. I mean, the training environment is, is one for, you will be sleep deprived at, severely sleep deprived uh, in training, um, in residency. No matter what, <laughs> I say that as somebody who went through a residency that stereotypically this is not an issue for, and people like to joke that the only time a dermatologist is woken up in the middle of the night on call is the night of the prom when somebody has a pimple. But that's not true. You know, there are a lot of dermatologic emergencies that, ha that happen in the emergency room. And um, 
you know, where the problem is that dermatologists don't often, are not often consulted in hospital settings because of the nature around like insurance and stuff like that and billing essentially uh, and reimbursement, how insurance reimburses things, which is sad because if a dermatologist is consulted early in a lot of cases, it can prevent patients from going into the hospital. Like things that are, you know, not common, necessarily common medical knowledge that is unique to the specialty of dermatology, we can easily diagnose very quickly and would otherwise be thought to be something more sinister that needed hospitalization. We can come in and evaluate the patient and be like, oh, no, 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 this is something that can be handled easily in the office. Um, and it can prevent the patients from actually going into the hospital, which is, a, you know, a huge um, t to reduce hospital admissions. Um, but in training, um, at least where I trained, we definitely took call and we, uh, especially in the first two years, uh, we took call and basically you would take call from home, which sounds really cushy, but um, you would have a like your cell phone and they would call you in in the middle of the night and you would have to get up and go into the, the um, emergency room usually and evaluate patients, do skin biopsies, um, all that sort of thing. And depending on the night, you could be up all night and you know you would get a couple of several patients and by the by the end of the night maybe you got like an hour or two hours of sleep because as you can imagine you start falling asleep and then the jolt of a pager going off awakens you and i mean this to be on to be frank this definitely does pale in comparison to like what most specialties go through in terms of what being on call is like but even for the quote cushiest residency in the sense of call, you can imagine how like drifting off to sleep just with that anticipation of knowing that you're going to get woken up, um, that you know it keeps you from going to sleep. You just start getting drifting off to sleep, and then you're jolted awake by a pager. You go in, you know, and then when you come back, you don't know if you're going to get another call from a, for a new patient or if the, they're going to they're gonna call you, like the pharmacy is gonna call you or something like that. So you're always like kind of on edge. And then, so we would do that call, it'd just be you too. And like, you'd have to call the attending too and staff the case with the attending. And sometimes they wouldn't wake up <laughs> or answer the phone. You'd have to call them a couple of times. And um, so before you could do, before you could finish it up, you had to clear everything with them. So that could take some time. Um, and sometimes they'd call you back and wake you up. <laughs> Not usually though. Um, and then, so you'd have a night like that, but then the following day, you would have to be up for, um, didactics, um, started, I want to say at seven. So you'd have to be there for didactics at seven and then you would go off to clinic. Um, I think our clinic started at eight thirty. didactics, didactics were from seven to eight. Um, and then, you know, you would get ready for clinic and you'd be in clinic all day and and so you'd be going on, you know, making decisions for patients all day um, on little, very little sleep. Um, that's like a best case scenario of, of residency on call, to be honest. But we were on call mostly in our first uh, year, mostly in our, towards the end of our first year, we were on call a lot. And then the second year we were on call a lot. It'd be like, I want to say every, every second or third night you were doing that. So you would have a couple of, you know, it, it varies from, from night to night. But I had some calls and my co-residents had some calls that you would be up doing that all night. And for, for a while, it just was very hard to get back on track with your sleep cycle. Um, and so that stays with you for a long time. Um, and if you're, you're talking about uh, physicians, like any surgical specialty, uh, OBGYN, like they're, they're often going on very little sleep. Um, and it's over the, you know, that uh, over the years, it's, it's not as bad as it was like in the seventies because there are work hour restrictions in place of how many hours residents could be working continuously or being on call. Um, but back in the 70s, there was like no work hour restrictions and it was, you know, at one time it literally, it was called residency because you literally lived in the hospital and you were just, you know, on that pager, 
Um, and it sounds, you know, like the culture of medicine is one where you're like completely sacrificing for the good of the patient. But in reality, that kind of sleep deprivation is actually putting patients significantly at harm. Not to mention when you finally do go home, you're putting the general public at harm because operating a motor vehicle with that little sleep is basically like leaving the bar um, after taking several shots of alcohol and getting behind the wheel. And I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic. It, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to drive when you have not, when you're asleep, you know, when you haven't gotten sufficient sleep. It, it's, your reaction times are impaired. Um, and you will, you will have these, because I've experienced, not behind the wheel per se, but I've experienced this with sleep being, you know, not having enough sleep where you might be sitting there and all of a sudden you just like blank out. You have these, it's not even like when you, when you start falling asleep and your head jerks, it's like these little in and out of almost conscious like interruptions and you don't realize things going on around it's 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 a bizarre experience to describe but it's dangerous to be behind the wheel when you're like that for sure we washed the car and now we're going to get gas <laughs> just a rip roaring root tooting exciting day in the green leisure suit today you guys I don't know if I'm actually going to swing into Costco or if I'm just going to go get gas. It all to, it's all contingent on it, on on the line to to the gas gas pump, which is typically uh, it, uh, not as bad as it appears. It can go quickly. Um, I only get gas at Costco. I like go out of my way to get gas because I don't trust these little ga these gas stations like Shell that are on the on the which the feeder roads as they call them here the frontage road getting off off onto the highway because they are this is an area where you have to be careful if you come here or i assume this happens in other cities too these are prime targets for purse snatching and muggings so um you know they they'll get you there because they have a quick exit just a boom speed on out of there onto the highway um and then they're gone you know so it's a it's it's a prime target thieves are honestly you know this is probably going to rub some people the wrong way but thieves cr career criminals they're they're highly intel a lot of them are highly intelligent um and it takes work too it, it takes work and i often think to myself what what would it have taken for that individual to to pivot in an, another direction? Like what what happened in this person's life, these people's lives? Uh, so many things, obviously, that led them down this path. Because what a shame! I mean, if you look at a criminal and the things that they actually accomplish, and I say that in quotes, if you had just directed that energy into something else, imagine what that person could have accomplished in their life. It's it's really sad when you think about it. It's very sad because, um, you know, I, when you think about what it takes to commit crimes, steal a car, um, and, and and those things of that nature, a lot of a lot of people are people overseeing these things. They're very intelligent, and it, it's just like, man, you could you could just imagine what they could have accomplished in their lives if they had not ended up. Now I went in here. I said I was going to get gas first, but. Um, the parking situation right now is just too good to be true at the club so we are here and I think I'm gonna go to the the end of the road shiny 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 that's the exterior of my car right now looks like my Vornado is back and I think I'm gonna get another one this new one has a remote though I don't know that I would use that. I just kind of leave mine on nonstop all the time. These are really good fans, $50. So not inexpensive, but they're really good fans. Check this out, 32 count creativity kit. You get 15 mid liner, mild liners that are chisel tip and bullet tip. And then you get 15, five that are brush and bullet and 12 click art bullet tips. $30. That's not a bad price for all of those pens. 
Um, I have some mild liners. I really like them because in contrast to a highlighter, they're not the, like the neon colors. They're really nice. But I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna get that because I have enough pens. Looks like Costco has got the pool items out and I'm filming from afar so you can see the breadth of this pool float. I guess it's like for a lake. That thing is massive. It's like a unicorn. Let's see. It's huge. I might get these purely indulgent cotton hand towels for my bathroom to dry my hands with and pat the drips of my face when I wash my face at the sink in the morning. $10.99, that's a pretty good price. This is a good deal on these placemats. Eight pack of placemats, $13.97. That rivals Kroger. These, not, these are nice, but like food splatters, the problem, the problem with this kind is food splatters can get hard to clean out from those little grooves. This material is almost like certain materials that you get for cross stitch. If you know, you know what I'm talking about, but it's just like this mesh. Looks nice, but yeah, food splatters can be hard to get out of those. I've had placemats like that before. I like the colors on these. Boston Traders all-purpose towels. Well, Costco did not disappoint. I'm in line for gasoline. Now, coming back to what I was telling you guys about like the expectation uh, historically to work, to live in the hospital during training and not sleep, it originated, and this guy is telling the story, and I, and I, I remember this, but had somehow blanked it out of my memory bank. Uh, the guy who came up with this, um, back then was from Johns Hopkins by the name of Halstead. He put insisted that this was the way to train and that sleep merely got in the way of learning and and getting better essentially. And he had this seemingly superhuman ability to not sleep. Um turns out the guy was addicted to Coca-Cola and I don't mean the drink if you know what I mean. And it's just mind blowing to me that you see this kind of thing. It happens all the time in, in, in where you have this hierarchical structure and you're not able to question, you know, you fear the consequences of questioning. You get these people who get put on a pedestal. This really happens in medicine. I, I mean, trust me. They get put on a pedestal and not questioned. And they can say things that people will just seemingly under them eat up and continue to espouse as gospel. So if I were to give anyone going into any aspect of the medical profession a piece of advice, it's to always, always look up the information yourself. Because these people get put on a pedestal and it's it's the most bizarre hero worshiping that happens I, and and they just cannot be questioned and they and, and this is a classic example and that ladies and gentlemen built this very toxic infrastructure for years and years and years of training of a, of a, of a detrimental and hazardous training environment because to expect people to care for people, to care for the sick, let alone operate on people's brains and what have you, <laughs> with no sleep, akin to taking shots of, I mean, it's akin, the physiology, the reaction times, it's akin to being drunk on alcohol. It's madness, it's madness. Now, one, the trade-off to that, however, because again, when, when we learn and we advance and we get away from things, there's always a trade-off, right? And the trade-off, unfortunately, is that what ends up happening in the hospital that can be very difficult as a result of, of work hour restrictions is that you have a lot more handoffs. And that is an opportunity for serious medical error to happen. And by handoffs, I mean, well, it's the end of the, you know, you can't be in the hospital any longer legally, so you have to go home. 
So you have to hand off your patient to someone else. And it usually happens after a long shift, you're exhausted, you're mentally taxed, um, things can get missed. Um, so that is definitely an opportunity where there is risk for for medical errors happening there in the hospital. All right. But yeah, I mean, people just get put, I'm telling you, it, and it's really hard when you are, when you are at the bottom of the totem pole to, to be able to question. And, and chances are you won't actually be able to speak up. I'm just being honest. You won't be able to speak up because you will, you know, you'll risk your career. It's just a fact. I wish it were other, uh, another way, but it's just a fact. You know, sometimes you just, it, it's just a reality of, of those kind of things. I mean, maybe you're brave enough and you do it and, and you know, you're here, you're better off for it. But uh, at the very least, always look stuff up yourself because I'm telling you, I have been, I've been misled by people of authority many times, you know, telling me that this happens because of this. And then lo and behold, when I actually take the time to look it up, it's like, dude, did you even read this? Like, exciting news. Looks like Kroger got in the Easter spring Tuscany Candle line, and the packaging is so cute. So you have Happy Easter, you have Jelly Beans, Easter Morning, Lotus Garden looks new. And then down here you have Strawberry Basket, which I already took a whiff of and it smells really good. There's also Cottontail Trail, which is Hyacinth Morning Dew and Moss. This looks new too, Island Bliss and Sunset Garden. Well, hey guys, just coming in with my tretinoin. And um, speaking of which, when you're first starting tretinoin um, and you're going through the dryness and peeling, the tops of the apples of your cheeks can be some of the most sensitive areas, areas, area of the face for the same reason. Um, and, and for that reason, like you might just be sitting there and it feels like your face is burning, there's redness. And a lot of people um, sometimes will ascribe that to being sensitive to the sun because when you're outside, your blood vessels and dilate in response to um, UV rays sometimes to bring in inflammation. So you can feel more, your skin can feel more sensitive when you are like sitting in the sun. Sunscreen is really important, but to clarify, tretinoin doesn't actually make you more susceptible to a sunburn, but it can make your skin feel more sensitive in the sun. Update on the Moroccan Oil Hydrating Styling Cream. I use this pretty much every night. I've been using it for months and months and months. Look how much I've gone through. Like barely a dent, this much. It's as though I'm not even using it, but I promise you, I use like, <gasps> I don't normally throw it on myself. Try again. I use one pump and I just work it through my hair. Sometimes I use another pump right before I use my Revlon, what is this called? My Revlon Sty Styling Pro, whatever it's called. I might use another pump to dry hair right before I use that. Um, I use that to style my hair some mornings. And I've been using that too for around the same amount of time and I really like it. But lately, this is how I've been doing my hair in the evening to get it out of my face. I do these like low twists and then I take these, which I love, just do one on one side. Just keeps it out of my face while I am <laughs> finishing up work. And then right before I go to bed, I just take it out. It's completely dry. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this vlog up here. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.